Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into this project. Now, we are gonna set up everything in this first video. If you're not interested in following along with that and you just wanna grab the code at the end, that's fine. Uh, there will be a link in the description to the GitHub. Just make sure you go to lesson one branch, download the code, and then you can jump in right with the next video. For everyone else, let's go ahead and jump right in. You will need Node.js on your machine. If you don't have that, you can just download this right here from nodejs.org and uh, install on your machine using the normal installation instructions. We're going to use Vite, which uh, is going to spin up a dev server for us and allow us to uh, process our CSS and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we will be using this, but we'll actually use the installation instructions found in the Tailwind docs because it will tell us how to integrate Tailwind and Vite together. In fact, if you go to Tailwind and click on Docs, it'll bring you right here. And what we're going to do is use this Frameworks Guide. And let's zoom back in. And uh, we're going to click on Vite. That's what we're going to use and jump in right here. Now, a couple notes here. I've actually already created a folder. So it's just an empty folder. And I opened VS Code to that. Whatever your web development environment is, just open up an empty folder. And then you can follow along with me. Now, in this case, I'm going to copy all of this right here. And we'll say npm vite, and then I'm going to do a dot because we're already in that directory. So this just says, hey, don't create a folder for me. Just do it in the in the present working directory. I can give it a package name, though. So let's call this uh, parallax landing page. We'll just use vanilla JavaScript. And now it tells me to use npm install, or you could just do i. That works as well. And we'll let all of the stuff for vite install. Now notice here we didn't have to CD into it because we were already in that directory. And now I can come right down here because we're going to continue with this. The next thing we're going to do is install, this installs Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, which is a processor for Tailwind, and then Auto Prefixer, which will add prefixes for other browsers like WebKit and stuff like that. Now in order to use Tailwind, you need a config and you also need something for Post CSS. So if I use this command right here, it'll actually create both of those for me. Now, if we did all that correctly and I open up my sidebar, here you see it's created this, this, and all this stuff from V is here as well. So let's scroll down to step number three. What we need to do is tell Tailwind where it should be looking to find Tailwind classes. And here it gives you a suggestion of index.html and anything else in here. We're actually going to change that up slightly because everything we're going to write is either going to be in this main.js or we'll have it in this index.html. So I'm going to open up this Tailwind config file. We'll close the sidebar. And then instead of all this, Let's just go ahead and add those files manually. Obviously, you probably want to add additional things if, you're, if this is going to be a full-fledged application, but I'll just say index.html, and with a comma here, I'll do uh, main.js. So only these two files will ever be looked at by Tailwind. Of course, you could just use this star syntax uh, to point it to a directory like this if you'd like. Step number four down here tells you that you need to basically add this to your CSS file. Let's open this back up. And we'll look for a CSS file right here, style.css. I'll just remove all of that and paste that in instead. And if I close my sidebar, shut that down, make sure I've saved my Tailwind config, and then come over here and type npm run dev, which is step six, npm run dev. It should spin up a dev server. And if I click right here, it should show me what I've got. All right, there we go. So it's stripped out everything and uh, it's very basic, but that's what I want. Now I'm getting a warning here that there are no utility classes. That's because of course we haven't added any. So let's just make sure it is working. If we come here to my index.html page and let's scroll down here and let's see, let's add to the body here, something like class of background blue uh, 400. And I'll save that and there we go. Okay, cool. So it is working. Uh, one thing to know as you're adding classes here, you're gonna see that I've got these suggestions that are showing up uh, in VS Code IntelliSense. And I'm getting that from an extension and it's called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense right here. And in fact, I would not write Tailwind without this. It's super helpful. Just make sure that you're getting the one that has been verified as uh, the owners of tailwindcss.com. All right, so with that set, let's go ahead and do a couple things to customize our experience. So I'm gonna open up the Tailwind config. Now in this project, I'm gonna have my own custom colors. I don't wanna overwrite all the ones from Tailwind. I just wanna to add to them. So the best way to do that is to come inside this theme and inside the extend object. And now what I need to do is reference the object for the colors. Now it used to be that you had to look all this up in Tailwind, but as of 3.1, which just released in early June of 2022, you can now just hit control space bar and get access to everything because of this type import up top here. So if I start to type like colors, that's the object I need, which means I can just go ahead and paste in my colors that I've got on my clipboard here. So this is going to give me three additional colors, background, muted, and accent. And the cool thing here is if I save this and come back over here, that extension's smart enough here where if I come in here and just say accent, it's already pulling that in from the tail and config. And now my entire back of my screen is that color. I'm eventually gonna wanna make a background. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, let's jump back here. We're gonna add a few other things. 
there's a class in Tailwind called Container. In fact, if I look for this here, there it is right there. And you can actually customize the experience if you'd like to. So I'll go ahead and uh, extend this object and change out a few things. To make sure we can see what's going on here, let me jump back over this way. If you hit Command K in the docs, you can just search for anything. So I'll search for Container and we'll look at different options. So by default, unlike some other frameworks, uh, the container class does not center things left and right. It simply gives you a max width. But you can actually customize the experience to be however you want. And you can see here that if you use center true, it will also center everything for you. So I'll go center true, just like that. And then you can also add some padding if you'd like. So to make sure that anything inside of a container always has padding, uh, you can do that as well. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is just use this right here. So let's bring that in. And that ensures that all my container classes will be set in the middle and I'll have default padding on the side. For now, let's just customize two other things. We're gonna customize the font family itself. So we'll come in here and again, I'll hit control and spacebar, and I can just search for font and there it is font family. That's how it should be written. And then I will have this change the sans default to an outfit sans serif. Now we'll grab that and add that in the HTML in just a second. But for now, I want to change one more thing with the font. And again, I'll hit control and spacebar, and then we'll search for font again. And I want to search for font size. Inside here, I want to overwrite the defaults and I want to, instead of making them static numbers, I want to actually make them dynamic with something called the clamp property. I'm going to paste this in and then let me explain what I'm doing here. Uh, you can see here that on each of these, let's zoom out just a touch so you can see them a little easier. I'm giving it two values inside of an array. This first one is just a normal CSS clamp property. What I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, this is the smallest I would want it to be. This would be the desired size and this is the largest I want it to be then the second value is going to be the line height. So in other words, these are dynamic values that I can use for typography all throughout the site so that as my viewport changes, because this is based on viewport right here, and it's calculating it based on the rem and the viewport combined, it's going to scale that type automatically. Again, you can grab all of this from the repo. Let me show you actually where I stole the code myself. There's a site called utopia.fyi. And this gives you elegant scale type and spacing without breakpoints. So you can come in here and look at uh, this fluid typography, set these up. And then down here, if you use clamp, uh, this is mostly supported everywhere. And so it's pretty safe to use. If you want to make sure you have a fallback, you can also add a bunch of stuff here. But I basically just grabbed all this, renamed it, and dropped it right in here. I think I may have altered it just slightly, but you can see that it's the exact same basic syntax. Now, how might this work in practice? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's come over this way and let's just do something up here. We'll do something like, hi, I am dynamic. And then inside here, we'll do text uh, 2XL or something like that. Okay, so let's come back over this way and you're gonna see, hi, I am dynamic. Let's also change all the type here. We'll say text uh, should be white and that way we can see it. Now, as I get smaller, you can see dynamically adjusts. And as I pull up, you can see it dynamically grows until it locks in at whatever the largest amount I'm allowed for that 2XL. If I come back over here to my config, I can see that for 2XL, the largest it will ever get is 2.93 rem. If you're interested in this CSS clamp function, I have done a video on my channel. You're welcome to check out, but there's lots of content out there on it. And uh, I think it's the best way to do typography myself. All right, so right now we are still using the default font. Let's go to fonts.google.com. I'm gonna search for outfit. And then I'll click in here and we could use a dynamic font, but let's just keep it real simple. I'm gonna grab, grab the regular, the medium, and uh, let's grab the bold as well. If I come up top here and grab this here, I can go ahead and add this script link right here and I'll add it to the top of my HTML. I'll put it below the title so that the title isn't waiting on this to load before it shows. That way it shows right away and uh, even as this can import in the background. All right, let's come over here. We're gonna close this down and now you can see that this font is being pulled in correctly and that's what I wanna see. Now, I think we just got one or two other things to do and then we'll call this video good. One thing we need to do is control how the browser interprets dark and light mode. So if I were to come over here and let's say something like, uh, actually let's grab this H1 and inside here, I'll say something like height screen, which sets this to 100 view height. I now get this scroll bar showing up, but notice that with my nice black background, I have a nice white scroll bar and I don't want that. Well, the browser actually has some default styling that we can take advantage of without having to write our own custom scroll bar, which you can do, but uh, for something as simple as this, we don't need to. And that's just done with a meta tag. So I'm gonna come up here and we'll say uh, meta. We'll give this a name of color scheme. 
and then I'm just going to tell it content equals dark. And now if I save this, now that automatically turns to a nice default dark mode. Now, this will be different per browser, but all of them will try to honor and respect this. It also works with forms and any other kind of default styling from the user agent. All right, I think that leaves just one more thing, and that is if I come over this way, I want to add a folder of images. And I've got that off screen, so let me drag that in. And now I should have access to all the images that we will need. So we've got several different options for these hero banners. We've got SVGs for the logo. We've got my slider images. So everything is set and ready for the project to start. Again, you can grab all this from the repo and that will be in the description below. All right, we are all set up. Next time we'll build out the site starting with the header. I will see you there.